So that shiny new game just came out, Spells and Secrets. And you want to know if it's worth your time, right? Well, let's take a look at the game for some first impressions. First thing to do is make a character and also name it. There's various different options here, but none of them go too in-depth in any category. It's all fairly light customizations. After creating a character and beginning, you're met with Professor Amanda and the Academy's protector, a griffin. After talking to them, I looked briefly around this area before heading to the next mission. This Academy and its graphics look quite nice. Once you get to your room, there's a scene. Something happens to the Academy's tower, and then on the intercom, they say an unknown force is trying to break into the castle. A book is in your room now, and you can read that and learn telekinesis, which is moving stuff around. This game originally caught my attention because of a few things. Wands, Academy, and magic. That's Harry Potter. Except it's not. But this game seems to be taking lots of inspiration from the Harry Potter world though. Professor Amanda pops in, tells you to use magic missile, and then pops out. Right away after attacking those slime creatures, I can tell this game is not only a Harry Potter copycat, but a very PG one at that. The way the interactions go, the enemies and the combat, it all seems fit for a younger audience in my opinion. If I saw a 7 year old playing this game, I'd be like, well yeah, that makes sense. Though that's not to say it's only fit for those ages. I think there's something here for everyone. Me for for example, I like Harry Potter, so just that aspect alone is enough for me, because this game has so many similarities. There's different enemy types, some are dealt with in other ways. The enemy near the first student I saved couldn't be damaged unless it was stunned first, for example. I then come across a human enemy for the first time. This one was nigh unbeatable, and I think that's the point. Once you lose, you teleport it back to the fountain area. Professor Amanda explains that I didn't die because the griffin had given me one of its feathers. Whoever has a griffin feather is literally unkillable. You just get teleported back to the beginning area when you lose all of your health. Now I can explore freely with no repercussions as I cannot die. However, when you lose all of your health, you lose all of the stuff that you had while on your current run. Coins and all of that stuff. You keep your experience in spells though. Over the course of the game, you'll get new spells. All of them have some use and can be used in conjunction with other spells. Some spells are better for different enemies. You actually have a smartphone also. So this time period is definitely modern. You can change what slots your spells are in, view the map, view the spells that you have, and view your rewards, which means what missions you've completed. There's people standing all around this beginning area that you can talk to. They all give tips or hints. Going through one of the gates brings you to an area where you can change the time of day at the sundial. Also in this area is all of the student factions. There's about four or five different ones here, and I couldn't join any of them yet. Some of them require different year spells too, like year 3 or year 4 spells. I finally get to the mission, which is to head inside the academy and rescue students and kill some enemies. I go around killing different types of enemies and using different spells for that. And as I went through killing enemies, I really wished that there was a dodge mechanic or a dash. You can't defend at all, you just have your normal move speed to get out of the way. So basically you'll want to be moving around most of the time. There's other stuff about this game I could talk about, but I only played for about an hour and this is meant to be a first look at the game anyways. I'm sure you understand the gist of the game at this point. If you die while inside the academy on a run, you'll respawn and you can begin again. The castle layout changes each time you die though, I think. This is a nice little game to play, though it's not quite what I expected. I expected more of an academy type game going to classes, learning spells that way, and then fighting enemies. But it's just fighting enemies immediately and learning spells on the fly. I'm looking right now and can see that it's also available for the Nintendo Switch. This game seems perfect for that honestly. Just sit back and relax while slinging some spells around. All in all, a good little game to play. That's my personal opinion though. Whether or not this is your type of game, I'll see you on the next one.